What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Taste Like Music. Jason, Joe, and Crams are here. Def Leppard Week, uh, side three. And uh, this week, we're going to take a moment to talk about Mutt Lang, his incredible production on three of Def Leppard's best records. He had a bunch of other huge records throughout the 80s, some going back into the late 70s, and even as recently as the 20 teens, he's uh, continued producing, and some of those records have been quite big as well, uh, even though maybe you don't attach his name to them quite as much as you do those 80s records. Uh, so we're going to each give our top five Mutt Lang productions. Here we go. Well, shouldn't we talk about the most important thing first? And him scoring with Shania Twain. I mean, he's a kind of homely dude. But man, if you can produce an album the way he can, I'm also pretty positive he's just a cool as hell guy. Like I've seen interviews with him, just seems like a cool dude. But, you know, I, I just got to bring it up. The Shania rules. All right, no. we can get back to the topic if you want. That's fine. My number five is Come On Over by Shania Twain. I think, uh, you know, I'm not the biggest Shania fan, but I think those songs sound great. I think they're very well produced. Um, and, you know, shows some versatility too and in, in in able to do a country record, country crossover record. Um, yeah, I think it's great. Uh, controversially, I'm going to go my number four, Hands All Over by Maroon 5 which it's not a record I want to listen to per se. I don't think the songs are great, but it is a fantastic sounding record. I think it's as good as uh, almost anything he did outside of a, of a couple records that I think are clearly better, but I think it's a, a really, really strong sounding record. Uh, then I'm going to go with Back in Black, which maybe isn't quite as you know fancy sounding as some of the mid 80s stuff, but it's just a lean and mean rock record it sounds fantastic uh so gotta go with that uh then i'm gonna go with uh, a band called the records kind of a power pop thing i had one of their tracks on my songs of the year list uh their record called shades in bed i don't think he actually produced the whole thing i think he did about half of it uh but it, just a really really cool uh, power pop record and then, of course, my number one's got to be Heartbeat City, one of my favorite sounding records of all time. I think the songs are great. I love it. It's one of my favorite records of the 80s. It, I think I said it was my favorite record of the 80s. That still probably holds true. And I just think it's phenomenal. Well, for me, it's kind of like the big, most obvious five. But let's shout out some cool shit that he did popping in on albums like Oops, I Did It Again and Backstreet Boys, Backstreet's Back and Millennium. He produces a track on Lady Gaga's Born This Way. So he's not just like a rock producer. He pretty much does whatever he wants. He's worked with Celine Dion, Michael Bolton, you know, Billy Ocean, some pretty cool stuff. Obviously, there's not going to be a lot of surprises in here for me. My number five is going to be Brian Adams, Waking Up the Neighbors. Love that big sound. I never really knew that he produced it, but once I read that it was, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Just like huge guitars. You get those big backing vocals coming in on everything. Like that's the, to me, that's the thing that you can pinpoint Mutt Lang. It's those backing vocals that come in that are just freaking awesome. Next, I've got Drones by Muse. No, I don't, Joe. Just relax. Next, I've got what? I've got Pyromania by Def Leppard. I think it's awesome. Go back and watch the Def Leppard video. Not quite as much as Hysteria, but man, what a difference it made, especially with just making every sa everything sounding so much bigger and so much fuller while kind of, you know, pressing a button on what the pulse of the current climate was but also doing it a little differently. Next, I've got Heartbeat City by The Cars as well. How can you not? Like, as soon as you hear the hello, 
hello again you're like this is this is mutt lang there's no doubt about it or magic you're just like this is mutt lang it's just everything sounds so robust and full and giant without being like fanfare for fanfare's sake it's just perfectly sleek and big sounding and then i've got back in black acdc We've told that story about when he's literally next to Angus Young, showing him how to play the guitar, you know, solo properly. Awesome. He's just got such a good ear for this. And it's cool going to high and dry after Back in Black, because like we said in the video, you know, he didn't really know what to do with Def Leppard, but he had so much success doing what he did with ACDC that kind of did the same thing a little bit with high and dry and Def Leppard. But yeah, just kind of doubling down on big riffs, catchy bluesy vocals and just like simple sticking loud drums like back in black just sounds like nothing before it in the acdc catalog kind of hats off to him there but my number one is hysteria it's a five-star album as much as we're talking about how much we love mutt lang probably the only five-star album that i've got love hysteria there's so many things in his catalog that i'm looking at now that i'm like i have no idea who these people are city boy clover the rumor actually i've heard the name of the rumor but yeah just quite a catalog just took off with back and black really all right um i don't know if it took off with back and black i believe you're forgetting a little something called highway to hell which is on my list i have five albums all five stars and uh you know, a lot of credit has to go to to mutt lang although I like many of these al bands' albums before Mutt and after Mutt. But Hysteria's got to be on my list. The production on it, you know, so slick, so big, without being overly cheesy. You know, he just really brings out I think, the best in bands, maybe by applying the same template that he, he did on all the other albums. Maybe he just found bands that kind of would work with his template. Not sure, but it works. And it worked wonders with Hysteria. Worked wonders with Heartbeat City from the Cars. Uh, I think we all liked the Cars before Heartbeat City. You know, it's not like he took some raw band without talent or without hit making potential. Cars had a million hits. He came in with Heartbeat City, and they have a million more hits with it. You know, slightly different, a little slicker, but still great stuff. Didn't take away their personality or anything like that. Uh, Back in Black, of course. Uh, kind of amazing that he was able to not even repeat the same formula because I don't think it sounds much like Highway to Hell. Like it's much bigger and, and louder. And where Highway to Hell kind of has like more bluesy sort of open feeling to it. Uh, obviously, Brian Johnson comes in for Back in Black and they tweak the sound a little bit, and make it a little more, you know, 80s leaning, kind of presaging what would happen in the 80s. Uh, but you know, still a great album filled with big radio friendly songs. Um, and then Pyromania is probably my number one. I don't know. They're they're all five star albums and they're all pretty close. So I don't know if it's my number one or not, but the work he did just tightening up Def Leppard's sound just a little bit. They were already, you know, kind of on their way to having hits. And he just sort of, you know, turned the knobs a little bit more. And you get Photograph and Rock of Ages and Foolin' and, you know, just massive hits like that. So, you know, Lang, great, great producer, able to bring out the radio friendliness of these bands and uh, without, you know, destroying their individuality. So I think that's pretty impressive. And no, Drones isn't on my list, although the production on that's pretty good. He does a good job with that. Glad to see no one picked Dark Horse by Nickelback so yeah or michael bolton no michael bolton sightings it's rough. you don't like michael bolton joe you it seems like he would be the one no he, he's got some hits but not quite in the same level four uh, by foreigner nobody gonna mention that one it was outside of my just outside of my top five i'm not gonna mention it i don't like foreigner hmm. But that is a different discussion. We're doing Journey next week, everybody. Let us know what your favorite 
Lang Productions are down in the comments. Let us know what you think of our picks. Uh, hit the bell for notifications, the like, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, website, merch, and Patreon is all in the video description. Check it out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.